Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Melissa, if you're new here. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join and the notification bell, that way you can be notified every time that I upload a video. So today's video is going to be five tips that I learned during this uh, BBL journey recovery process. Things that I have done or am currently doing to make life easier. So, still like hard to breathe in my faha, like, anyways. Okay, so the first tip that I have for you, when I went to my pre-op appointment, I was given my stage one faha, looks like this. When it was given to me, I was told, bring this with you the day of surgery, but do not open it because it may not be the correct size. So while I was there, I purchased an additional stage one faha. That way I would always have a clean faha to wear while I was washing the other one. So I leave the pre-op appointment with my two stage one fahas. I do not open them. Bring one unopened faha with me on the day of surgery. And I have the surgery, everything went great. Get back to the room, sleep however many hours, when I wake up the next day, it's time for me to go to my post-op appointment. So I go to my post-op appointment. Um, they take a look at me, everything helped me put my faha off, put it back on and tell me it's okay for you to shower today. I said, great. I really want to get out of this faha because I know it's completely soaked with blood because I've changed my chucks pads or my puppy pads. I went through probably 20 in the first night. So I am take my faha off, get in the shower, clean up, and then I take my faha, the new one, I open it up and I pull it out and I proceed to put it on. This month can't even go up past my knees, okay? It is, it's a size large, okay? It's so small and so tight. I thought, holy shit, I swole up a lot just getting in the shower. Like, no wonder you have to stay in these fajas. I tell my husband, go and get my faja that's um, drying right now so that I can see what size it is. Maybe it's a different size. What does that say? That says 2XL. That doesn't say large. So here I am in the bathroom, butt ass naked, one large faja dangling around my ankle, not knowing what to do. So unfortunately, I don't know if it's mainly because of COVID or because it is a type of garment that is on surgical areas that could have your bodily fluid and you don't want that being transferred to other people. But unfortunately, once the package is opened, it is non-returnable and non-exchangeable. So here I am with this. Let me show you how much this costs. I have saved the receipt. Here I am with this $160.50 useless piece of fabric that I cannot wear. So it is brand new. I have not worn it. I will be posting this on my Poshmark. So if you um, know for sure that you are going to need a size large stage one faha. You can get a brand new one drastically reduced just in an open package on my Poshmark. I will list the link to my closet down below if you're interested or just send me a comment. Let me know you're interested in it and we can, you know, uh, work the details out. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm back. I'm in the bathroom. Okay. Back in the bathroom. I'm naked. I'm telling my husband, can't return it. We can't get our money back. And he's like, well, what do you want me to do? And I said, get in the car and drive to the doctor's office and buy me a 2XL Faha. Like, I don't care. I need it. Go, go buy one. So I have two, two stage one Fajas, which was very beneficial when you are changing out of your Fajas every day. Um, or if they get soiled or soiled from the bathroom, that's another thing we're going to talk about today. You always have a clean, dry one ready and available. So it is a good idea to make sure that you have two stage one Fajas because you are going to be living in these for um, two weeks. At least my surgeon recommends wearing this for two weeks. 
Speaking of fajas, so the stage one, that particular faja is a open crotch. Whoop, is an open crotch faja. So it is open right there. Which is why it's a good idea to wear one of those adult diapers over because it will not only help with any uh, drainage from your incision sites, but you know, as women, you know what happens down there. Sometimes you get a little bit of clear discharge, which is totally natural. Um, and you, you don't want that just going all over your faja. So with the stage two faja, the particular one that I have on, and I can't really show you, um, can't really, <laughs> can't really show you the crotch area, but I do have the bag. Let me see. Let me show you the picture. So it looks like this. It's the tan one right here. This is the one that I have and that I have on right now. And it has a little flap, a little flap that you um, kind of tuck in and then you snap it up. But the thing is, is you're not supposed to wear underwear underneath your faja because the lines can leave indentions on your newly lipoed skin and you don't want that. So what I've been doing is I bought a package of these super thin uh, panty liners. And when I say super thin, they are super thin. Now remember, I haven't had a period in like 10 years, so I have not had to use pads or anything in a long time. So. These are super thin. It's like, do you see how, th how thin this is? It's like super thin. So I take this and I put this on that inside part of that liner on the faja, put it down just like that. I tuck, the, tuck that fabric flap across my hoo-ha and then button everything up. And so this will keep my faja from getting dirty, whatever. So that is number two. These, I think, are a great uh, investment. I will definitely be using these. Number three, here we go, number three. Poise pads, poise pads, poise pads, whatever you call them. So, let's see here. Ooh, they're pretty big, right? I'm telling you, when I try to use the bathroom, like to have a to have a bowel movement, to have a poop, my first poop, it was difficult. I watched so many videos that said, get your BBL pillow, wrap a Chuck's pad around it, put that on the edge of the toilet, and kind of hover your booty over and poop. Would it work? Um, others said, put the toilet seat up and flip it around, flip your BBL pillow around and sit on the toilet backwards. That didn't work. Um, others said, you know what? Just sit on the toilet backwards completely and, and go. I don't know. I don't know what it is with my body. My body just knows like, you need to just sit on the toilet like you have been for your entire life if you want the pipes to start flowing. Now the problem with that, especially with your first bowel movement after surgery, or usually, at least for me, I was super constipated. I did not go to the bathroom for the first five days. And when I did, whew, let me tell you, let me tell you, it's, I don't even wanna talk about it because I'm still scarred and it was very, very traumatic. I probably will need to seek counseling for that. Anyways. But what I decided to try to do was I don't want to sit on the hard toilet seat because that's going to leave impressions on my butt and my thighs. So I thought, why don't I use these thick ass poise pads as a little cushion on the toilet seat? So I took two of them and put them together. So there's two here. I took another pair here and then I put this on the toilet seat. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We're in my bathroom, okay? Sorry it's not super clean. Anyways, this is what I do with the pads. Put one here and the other one I overlap so it looks like that. And then I sit down and I do my business. And it's cushioned enough, it doesn't leave imprints on the booty. You just have to make sure they don't fall in the toilet. 
I know some of you will say, well, Melissa, why don't you just take the sticky off, take the sticky off of the back of these and put them on your toilet seat. Then they won't budge. You're right. They won't budge. I did that in the hotel room. And let me tell you, I pulled these off when I pulled this part. Part, this whole sticky part was super sticky and I guess from the pressure of my butt pushing down on it all the time they stuck to the toilet seat when I ripped these off half of it was still there so I had to douse it in alcohol and like scrape it off it was a huge ordeal so I just leave the leave these on I don't attach them to my toilet and I just make sure that I am careful when I'm sitting and when I'm getting up that I don't let them fall into the toilet or fall onto the floor so that was super beneficial. What tip was that? Three? Three. Okay, four. Tip number four. Where in the world did I put those? Oh, so a lot of girls were talking about the little um, triangle that you wear in your faja that goes like down here in your lower back or the triangle that they wear over their pubic area when the fupa area gets super swollen after surgery. And they sell those on Amazon. They're like, 20 30 dollars or something like that um and and they work you know they provide the compression but look at how thick this compression is right so what i did because i have that you know what let me show you that little pad this is that little pad i'm talking about so look at this so it is you know cushiony but look at compare the compression capability <laughs> the cushion we're in science class we're comparing the cushion capability no compare the how thick this one is so this definitely would be able to provide more compression so i use this in my lower back for the first 10 days um i did not need it for my pubic area because i didn't have any liposuction in my belly but what you can do to make this yourself is you can take you can go and buy um, a roll of gauze from the store for like, from the Dollar Tree for like 99 cents. For the pharmacy, two triangles out of your foam pads, layer those together and then wrap the gauze around and you have this nice squishy compression. This works so good and it's super cheap. You don't have to use your foam pad. You could even just buy like three rolls of gauze and roll it into the shape of a triangle and that would work too. But I really felt like this was more compressive than this because I tried to put this in my lower back and it was like, I felt it like it was there, but when this was in there, it was like, ooh, yes, okay, I feel you back there. So I definitely preferred this method. My fifth and final tip. This one was the the best one. Well, maybe I have maybe I have six. Six tips, I guess. So if you're staying in a hotel, um, my husband and I just stayed in a double bed hotel room. Um, and yeah, we can open up the windows and whatnot, but being in that room, in the same room, you know, it's not a very big space and you're cooking in there, living your life in this room basically for 12 days. One thing that I bought when I was at, uh, in Miami was just those little, um, dollar air freshener thingies. Like it looks like this. So I bought one of those and I put that in the room just to keep it, you know, smelling nice and fresh and not like musky and dusty and all that stuff. I'll just call that little air freshener thing like a bonus tip. The best tip I can give you, hands down, Arnica. I'm telling you, I was so skeptical when I heard so many people saying, oh, drink the Arnica tea, take the Arnica tablets, use the Arnica um, cream. And I was like, what is this natural plant, you know, stuff going to do for me? It's not going to do anything. It's not strong enough. Like this is surgery. This is real life. Like, yeah, but you know what? It works. <laughs> it works. I don't know what kind of witchcraft it is, but it works. Let me tell you, I will show you um, how bruised I was. And then this was just after taking, I didn't take any of the tea. I had the tea, but I didn't drink any of it. And I did not bring the Arnica gel with me to you. So um, the tablets, I only took two tablets every four hours, every single day. And you saw how bruised I was. And then just after four days, 
I mean, look at the difference. The bruising's like practically gone. Um, and it really does help with swelling and with, and with pain and stiffness and everything. The best, the best thing to do, Arnica. Arnica, Arnica, Arnica. That's five things already, right? Yeah. That's pretty much the thing that I learned going through this recovery journey on what really works for me. Some of these tips you can try out for yourself and let me know if it worked for you or if it didn't. Hopefully it can. And I will leave um, a link down below if you wanna buy those Arnica tablets. I bought them on Amazon, so they're um, readily available. I didn't even bother to look for them in the stores, which, I, which I'm sure they probably have them like at Walmart or Walgreens, but I just ordered it. So if you wanna order some, they're down below. And then um, I did also post the link to the Poshmark if you're interested in that Faha. I will also be listing these two Fajas. These are the, the 2XL stage one Fajas. I have washed them and I sanitized them in the Lysol um, antibacterial sanitizer. So if those will fit you, I mean, don't spend $160 on a new one when you can get it for way cheaper. My stats before surgery, I am five, three-ish, five, four, and I was 180 pounds going into surgery. So that's to give you an idea of, you know, if your body type is the same as mine. So if you're interested, let me know. Those will be posted up there. That's it. That's it for this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, share this video, leave me some comments and love below. Let me know what you'd like to see from me next. If you had any questions about any of the tips that I shared with you here, hopefully I can clear those up for you. And that is all, I guess, yeah. So, stay tuned for my EBL experience video with before and after photos, just everything, my whole experience while I was in Miami. That is it. Thanks so much for stopping by and I will see you in the next video.